when the album first came out, the music to be murdered by, and I was like, like sometimes I like to trip off people's reactions and shit. And I didn't get the young MA line when she was like, you can lead this earth, bitch, I'm in rake mode. I'm like, what? why is anybody tripping you? Leave this earth, rake mode. And it just flew over my fucking head. And I was like, damn, I didn't even get that shit. Mm -hmm. And like, you reverse on, I will. Um, when you said that, I, I, I got the John Wilkes, this who I'm in the booth, like, hey, bruh, I go ham for dead presidents. I got the ham for, hey, bruh, ham. Mm -hmm. Like, I got the hey, bruh, but I didn't get hey, bruh. Yeah. Like, hey, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, I missed that, and I was like, fuck, how did I miss that? God damn. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens. Like, that Ohio scheme you did, that shit was oh. crazy. And it took me like two listens to get the Cincinnati. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Line. I was like, wait a minute. Cincinnati. Since and Addy. Yeah. Oh shit. It's the shortest thing for a dress. Yeah, I saw I saw some people got that and I was like kind of because sometimes I don't know if you ever be sitting around writing some shit and you're like, man, nobody's gonna get this shit. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, well, let me just try it and see right. if anybody does. Like right. but that's that's the like that's kind of the beauty of wordplay. Right. It's like sometimes people ain't gonna get it the first listen. They'll get it the second, third, fourth, fifth listen. It's gonna take a lot of listens for the new one that you just dropped. Um, music to be murdered by the line. It's so many lines in there. So many. What's up, y'all? It's your man King Crooked. I'm live in Dr. Dre's lab right now, you know what I'm saying? And um, I could spend the whole episode giving, you know, props to the man across the room from me. You know, his achievements are just incredible. You know what I mean? Um, what, what are you doing, Marsh? He's, oh, you talking about me? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking oh, about okay. you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got the homie in the house, one of the greatest of all times, Marshall Mathis, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, bro. I Absolutely. really appreciate that. Absolutely. Appreciate your time, man. Um, Let's jump into it, man. Let's talk about Music To Be Murdered By. It's um, inspired by the 1958 release from Alfred Hitchcock with the same title. What made you do that? Well, it was actually, Dre had the sample like years ago, right? And he made a beat to it. And one day it just popped in my head. I can't remember why. So I hit him and I was like, yo, what did what ever happened to that beat? And he was like, oh, it's still around. So. But the beat was the beat was different. I just updated a little bit with some drums and shit, right? right? But like that was it was based off that that I started thinking like, yo, that whole concept is crazy. Like music to be murdered by. Like I wonder if I could play off this whole Alfred Hitchcock thing. And and then Dre started hit me with ideas. It was like, yo, you need to listen to this album that he has. So he sent me the link to that. And I started listening, and I was like, "Yo, I could, I could base this whole album off, off that." Wow. There was actually some stuff that didn't make it on there that I was trying to get on there, but we couldn't really work it out with the sample clearing. Mm -hmm. But I had it even more intertwined than it was, and we right. had to, you know, pick and choose the the best pieces to put on there just for sampling issues and shit. But uh, fucking samples. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I was stuck in traffic for like three hours listening to it over and over and over. And I caught something new every single time. And it's like, this is going to take, you know, to about 2021 or some shit before everybody really gets all of it. And I'm talking about avid fans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you write in that type of, on that level, you know, like you said, you said you just put it in anyway, even knowing that it, it could slip by people's radar. Yeah, I feel like I feel like, you know, um there's a certain there's a certain kind of fan that will get that and there's a certain kind of fan that might just be the average listener who doesn't, you know, they like hip hop and it and it sounds good. Something sounds good to them, mm -hmm. right? But they might not understand exactly what 
we're doing how dope it is. <laughs> yeah. But well, but but that's what's dope about those reaction videos and also the the people who break down the lyrics and they mm -hmm. show you like, okay, he was hitting these syllable schemes right here. Every single syllable, there's five syllables there mm -hmm. or seven. Right. And he was hitting these right here. And he started a new syllable scheme, rhymed with that syllable scheme, and then came back at the end and rhymed with the first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that that helps people like really to understand the genius. Yeah. To understand. Zoning off of one joint, stopping Stop the limo, limo. hopping the window, shopping, shopping the, the demo, demo at gunpoint. gunpoint. Yeah. The outer rhymes are two syllables, the inner rhymes are five syllables. Yeah. That's, in my opinion, what makes you one of the greatest <clears throat> of all time. Yeah, but that's, to me, my opinion back to you because. When we did the, what the fuck was it? My house. Mm -hmm. Like this is this. Me and Royce joke about this shit all the time. We're like, fuck, crooks gonna be on this song. <laughs> <sighs> all right, <laughs> but uh, but we joke about that shit all the time because it's like, uh, you and him, to me, make verses that. Even if you laid them first, they're untoppable. So it's like. I can only hope to tie mm. at best. That's a big, when you that's a big yo, compliment from you, dog. But, bro, when you did the, in my house, the lights out, the utilities in the facility, for the life out, to wipe out, I forgot the next mm -hmm. scene, but it, utilities in the, like, he was rhyming all that. Right. Like, that shit was like, and, the, and, and, and being able to keep it going, like, that's what I think a lot of, a lot of the average listeners sometimes might not mm -hmm. understand that we, the, the, you know, because some people don't catch the syllables. They think that we're, you know, rhyming, you know, my house, the lights out, utilities mm -hmm. in the facility, like house rhymes and out rhymes. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Right. They're not catching the full scheme. Yeah. Yeah. They're not catching the my house, lights out, da -da 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 the lights out, the wife out. Like there's two there, but then there's utilities in the facility. Yeah. Same thing. It's like... That's the that's the beauty to me of the craft of MC. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, is that that's important to you? Hell yeah, yeah. Because it's it's, and I know it's important to you because it's what makes rap fun, right? Right. So sometimes we might not, we might not have a, we might we might be in the mood to like not even, not uh, to write a song that might not have a message to it. Right. Might not really be saying anything that's important. Right. right. But it's more about the craft, and we're just trying to go yeah. as hard as we can go, you know. And <clears throat> I think that that, to me, is what makes it fun. Right. Is being able to you you know when you thought of the hey bro, I go ham for dead presidents. Like you feel something, mm -hmm. right? When right. you when you think of that, you're like, yeah. oh shit, like, oh shit, that's kind of yeah. ill. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let me let me figure this out. Let yeah. me sit down with this scheme and figure it out. But that's that's to me, man, is the beauty of uh. Of this culture, I guess. How did the um, Young and May collab come about? I was very surprised to hear her on there, you know what I mean? She's been doing damage yeah. all around. How'd that come about? Well, when she put out, uh, ooh, mm -hmm. I was like, yo, she's dope. And I kind of started following her a little bit. And then it was like, um, I started watching every video she put out. Word. And I was more so, like, intrigued by her persona. Like right. how how like she just carries herself like a star, right? Right. Like she's just like charisma, right? Right. But she also had the bars, and I was like, man, like this is like like she's really got bars. Like I was, so then I I just went down the wormhole of like the eat freestyle she did, right? And then she did flex, and how she was just calm, murdering it on flex, yeah. right? But she barely even. Brother Raise her voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like she was just calmly killing it. I was like, oh my God, she's so I just reached out. I was like, yo, I wanna I, I wanna put her on an album, man. Like I wanna do something with her. And hit her up. And I was like, yo, I want I said I got this intro to the album. And then I want you to be the first thing that people hear mm. after that. You know what I'm saying? Like gave it an alley oop. Yeah. Crazy. She just, yeah, she just went in. And she murdered it. Is, is that what you do? You go down a rabbit hole? With different artists, when you when you start liking them and you go down the wormhole, kind of. It's funny because I usually spend. I mean, this has been this way for a while. I usually spend like an entire Saturday, mm. if if I'm not at work, if I'm not at the studio, 
I spent like an entire Saturday going through everything that's out. You know what I'm saying? Like checking out everything. Wow, y'all hear that? So, on Saturday, so y'all better bring y'all best shit. Never know who listening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> For real, man. Um, Black Thought. Like, I feel like you guys finally gave us what we wanted—a collab. You know what I'm saying? Um, how the hell did that happen? Well, I had been wanting to do something with him, and I just never found the album or the song that I felt like would be good to get him on. It right. was worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, this might be right up his lane. Denon made the beat, right? So Royce put a verse on it, and then Q-Tip had the hook. Mm. And when I heard the hook, I was like, my era, my era. And I was like, me and him are kind of from the same era. You mm. know what I'm saying? So this might work. Right. So I just hit him up through Royce, asked Royce if he could send him the track. Right. And, and it just y'all made magic. Yeah, you know, I mean, Magic, that was a collab that hip-hop has been waiting on for a long Yo, time. Yo, his, his fucking Funk Flex freestyle was just like, <sighs> oh, my God. That man went what in for 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> fucking crazy. Boy. But again, it's what we love about this music, right? It's because, especially as a competitive rapper, mm -hmm. right? We rap to be... We're competitive rappers, right? right. We're not just... Like we're in it, we do this, this is what we do. And it's like inspiring to hear that shit, but it also like kind of gets you like, oh fuck. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like gives you anxiety, right? right? But it's like, but at the same time, you kind of get pumped up about it and be like, oh shit. Every time something new comes out like that, you're always like, like my mindset is like, yo, I gotta try to top that. Literally. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And then you go do it. Um, first of all, congratulations, man. 10 number ones on Billboard 200. That's oh, incredible. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, I got to put that out there, man. Mm -hmm. I, I like, um, how does that feel, though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Did you ever imagine that you have 10 number ones? D ever. Ever? Never in the history of my life. Like, I could never, like, imagine. Like, like for me, what's, what's, what's crazier about it, that, to me, is, like, being able to meet my childhood idols, mm -hmm. being able to sit down with LL Cool J, right? One of my favorite rappers of all time ever. When I had, when I made the the Relapse album, right? he sat in the car, in the truck, and we drove around, and he listened to the whole album. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, I don't, I don't even know what to say, because I don't want to play myself, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to, like, but before we, before we got out the truck, I was like, yo, man, I just want to say, like, um, like, what you mean to me, man. Like, and I was trying to, like, not make it come off sappy, but I was just like, yo, man, I, like, I, I'm, I'm a stan of you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but, but just to sit there and be like, all right, 15, 16 year old Marshall thinking that that could actually happen one day. Right. And I'm gonna be sitting in the car. LL's gonna be sitting around the, in the car with me, and he's listening to my album. Wow. Fuck out of here. Wow. Like that to me, like meeting Dre was just like holy shit. Is that what kind of keeps you grounded? Like your love for the culture? I mean, is that like you know, after a huge amount of success, you know, it would be easy for you to be a different type of person. You know what I'm saying? Like, what keeps you grounded? I just think, I mean, I am so, I'm so in love with this art form, right? And I'm so passionate about it because it's really the only thing that I ever was good at. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like aside from basketball, I'm amazing at that. But that's you, a whole You're getting world. buckets? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, uh. nah, it just, you know, I, I, I just love it. I, I love, I love to watch, like, you know, like the YBN core days come up mm. and you're like, oh shit, he's going to be the next, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, it's the same shit why when I listen to one of your songs, I don't really want to because it gets like, I get anxiety, but I have to. <laughs> I mean, I, I not that I don't want to, but. Yeah, man, I mean. <laughs> I, it's nerve, it's fucking nerve wracking. Every time you and Royce, 
you know, and I think because, it, you know, we're also in this circle together kind of, and it's like, uh, but it's like, like, y'all are the rappers, you and him are the rappers that I, that I get anxiety being on a song with. Because I'm like, man, I gotta fucking, I gotta push the pen. Rap is like Tech Nine, mm. right? Right. He's so fucking proficient. Right. <laughs> I don't know what right. another word to say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's so like, man, he craps out every syllable. Every, every one. Every single one. Every fucking rhyme scheme. Like it's just like you're hearing 20 different things that rhyme with each other in succession. And Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sure you hate this too, like to, to be like, well, yo, you don't understand what we're doing. Right, right, right. But sometimes some people really don't understand what we're doing. They don't understand it. I mean, and I get it. Sometimes if I listen to something that you made, I'll be like, damn. Either, why didn't I think of that? Or, you know, damn, I said something kind of like that, but yeah. I didn't say it like that. And then it's like, okay, I can't say that now because he already just said it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, That's always crazy, man. I, it's a new era, man. Like, I always wanted to know, like, what's your perspective on people with longevity such as yourself adjusting to the new era of, of hip hop? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's you know, that's another one of the things that make it fun, too, is like being able to watch like Cole and Kendrick come mm -hmm. up and seeing how. How great they were right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like you start like I. I mean, aside from them, like I pay, I pay attention to everything that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like right. er, all the new shit I try to stay up on, you know, uh, who's doing what, flow patterns, that kind of shit, because it's always inter it, interesting to me, like the baby, like I never know where his rhymes are going to land. Right. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that shit is so interesting to me because he does it so well. It's the same thing with you and Royce. It's like, I don't, I don't really know where this is going to go and and when I get on a song with with you or him I know what I'm going to get in the sense of the bar it's going to be but I don't know what I'm going to get what for, what style what you know what I'm saying right, like, right. I don't know I can't predict right a flow pattern I can't never yeah. predict anything it's the same thing if I get on a getting on a track with Kendrick I can never tell what the fuck he's gonna do? Right, because he is such a chameleon of styles, and he can fucking do any, pretty much anything, right? right? And he's and he's so proficient at it, he's so good at it, and you don't know what you're gonna get. That to me is like a top tier lyricist because it's like you don't, you can get your ass kicked any day. You know what I'm saying? Like certain rappers get on a certain song, and it's like it just depends on. Yeah, just like you. I mean. You've probably inspired countless, you know, stupid bars when people knew, okay, I got to get on a song with him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they just know, you know, I, I'm i very surprised if you ever have done a song with, every time I listen to a song that you've done with another artist, it's always one of their best verses. You see what I'm saying? It's like you inspired them to push their pen like that. You know what I mean? And that's got to be something to walk in the room and just change the energy absolutely absolutely i mean but it's <clears throat> you know it's it's a craft that you know we've i don't know if i've mastered it yet but it's but i'm still trying to figure shit out you know really? what i'm saying like as long as i've been in the game i'm always trying to figure out new flow patterns and mm. new, you know what i'm saying like new cadences and shit and trying to still trying to always get it right you know because it's like i i Making an album, I don't always get it right. I don't get it, always get every song right. I don't always get right. every delivery right, you know? So it's one of the things I'm just always trying to improve. Are you your toughest critic? Absolutely. I mean, you're probably yours, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, cause you, because you know that you can't sit down with the pen and just rhyme the last word of every line. You know what I'm saying? Like you like, said, that's not fun. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? not fun. That's like, all right, cool. You know what I yeah. mean? You know what I mean? And, and your love for hip hop is just evident. You know what I'm saying? Like, even the t-shirts you choose to wear sometimes. I sit back and I see a picture of you is that rocking the stage. Shirt? You feel me? Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like you, 
I think you had like Lock Him Shabazz on one of your t-shirts, you know what I'm saying? No. And, and a lot of people don't even know, you know, who that call themselves hip hop heads might not even know who that is on your shirt. Is that yeah. something you do on purpose? I mean, it is something I do on well, A because I love it. Because mm -hmm. it's fun for me. Like it makes me feel like a kid again. It's like, oh shit, I got, you know, I got this album cover on. Like, like think about. When I think of like iconic album covers, NWA's first album cover, mm. Audio 2's first album cover, mm -hmm. like the color scheme of that, like right. how they was wearing the airbrush shirts and right, shit. Right, like, right. like having that on a shirt is A, it's dope to me, but it's also like maybe if I'm doing a show and some of the younger fans don't know who this is, they'll go back and, you know, look at go back and say man who is that on that shirt yeah. and, and, and get educated and, and and be like oh shit yeah because lock him shabazz was fucking nice i'm raw and rare i walk in the square of pure righteous <laughs> yeah. man and being that much of a you know a part of the culture <clears throat> history books are going to definitely put you as one of the greatest of all time how do you feel about the concept of white rappers being a guest in the house of hip-hop well i mean that's the funny thing. I I don't know if I've got a chance to say this yet, but um, the funny the funny shit is like I I with with the whole beef of a certain person. Right. right. <clears throat> I never said I wasn't a guest. Right. Like I'm absolutely a guest. Like I <laughs> I never said I wasn't. Right. And I never said I was king of anything. Right? Like, right. I had a song called Kings Never Die, but it wasn't me saying, that was one of the beats that Khalil sent me with the hook on it. That was the right. concept of the song. And I'm like, I can't say I'm the king of hip hop. Right, right, right. Just say, so I threw Run DMC in there, Jam Master J. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. And was trying to, like, because I never want to be, like, I don't want to be the, the king of hip hop. How, who the fuck is the king of hip hop? Yeah. Like, is there a king of hip hop? Like, I don't. Yeah. Like, nah, I feel you on that. People would say, people would say, just because you sell the most records doesn't mean you're the best. Just because right. you can rap 40 million syllables doesn't mean you're the best. Like, I care more about rhyming the syllables. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I care more about the craft than any of the other. And that, and that shows. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it goes back to those who know. You know what I mean? If you know, you know. And um, I just don't, I don't get it sometimes. You know what I mean? I, I watch these rap media so-called critics and some music journalists and so many of, of your bars and your messages goes over their heads. And you know, they like even with the content conversation, I mean, you've been having content since day one. You got songs to prove it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, what the, f what is content? What are, you t what are you talking about? What do you want me to talk about? <laughs> Think about the first time you heard Rakim, right? So when people make these lists, and he's always on the list, mm -hmm. but he's also always on my list because to me, greatness is not only how well you do something, but if you were the first to do it, Rakim was the first person that I heard that started taking, using like inside rhyme schemes, right? and coming back at the end and hitting the, you know what I'm saying? So he did something that hadn't even been thought of yet. Original. Yeah, it was like, and he single-handedly pushed the genre forward to be more complex lyrically. And Absolutely. then And then and birthed fucking Kane and G-Rap, right? Right. And man, like I, like, those two will always be on my list too because like Kane was doing confuse and lose, abuse and bruise the crews who choose to use my name wrong will pay dues. Woo. Man, come on, nobody was doing that. Nobody like, was that doing was that. Like that was every single fucking yeah. word he said yeah. rhymed yeah, and he just exactly. made a sentence with it. Like, and he, that made sense, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every person who's a fan of hip hop might feel like hip hop is about something different, mm. right? It ain't about lyrics, it's about how good you fl you you flow in your cadence mm, right right or it ain't like but it's it's or it, or it's just about the beat is dope and just having a message over it mm. that could be what your opinion of what hip-hop is about my right. opinion is hip-hop is about lyricism and the greats who we put up on the pedestal mm -hmm. right that's what they were about and that was the the beauty of us being able to learn how to do it 
and learn from them, right? So yeah. Like, Do you ever agree with any of the top 50 lists that circulate on the internet? Have you seen one that you're like, oh, yeah, that's accurate? I've seen a couple of them where I feel like, okay, that's kind of accurate. I'll never want to come off as preacher and be like, you know, you don't understand what we do. We're so much smarter than you. No, it's not about that. But we do the craft and we do rap at a certain level where we know, like game recognize game, right? Right. Like you can appreciate Jordan because Jordan was like a spectacle to see, right? It was just like, holy shit. Right. But I don't even know how yeah. shit he was doing. It's like mechanics... If I hire somebody to fix my car, I'm not going to hire a painter. I'm going to hire a mechanic. A mechanic yeah. knows what he's doing under the hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I can't explain what he's doing. And you could be like, yo, that's the best mechanic I've ever seen. Right. Like I saw, I saw, um, what is it called? My extra, expert opinion with Math Hoffer, right? Right, right, right. And it was an episode where they were talking about the verse that I did on the Fat Joe thing. And I was like, these are the guys, these are the guys who have, if I was coming up like mm -hmm. as a rapper or just a fan of rap or whatever, I would want to hear from them because they do this too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like game recognized game. Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't know if, if this guy is the best mechanic in the fucking world. Right. I don't, you know what I'm saying? It's right. not my thing. But someone who is a mechanic might be like, yo, this guy is he's the fucking goat. Yeah. Of, exactly. Changing and, your muffler. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then we come and argue with that guy. Yeah. You know, he's not yeah. a goat, and, well, he, I'm, and yeah, I'm not exactly. a fucking yeah. mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, it's like, you don't want to sound too preachy and be like, you just don't, you know, you, we're so much smarter than you. You don't understand what we're doing. Like, yeah. it's, not about, it's not about that. But it, but at some point, it's just like, I can't take your list seriously. If they don't have you on it, they don't have Royce on it, I can't take it serious. I can't take it serious because it's like, um, you don't, you don't know, really know what you're talking about. So I can't even get mad at, I can't get mad at you. Right. I think that a lot of times when people make these lists, they're mistaking the greatest rappers for their favorite rappers. Mm. So what they mean to say is, these are my favorite rappers, these are my right. personal favorites, right? Right. Jay, Nas, they're always going to be on that list, right? Right, you're and always going to be on it. On some people's, but... I, dog, I've never seen a list without you on it. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I well... I'm, I, you might not be where you deserve to be. You know well, what that's, I'm saying? That's, in my opinion, that's how I feel when people don't put you and Royce there because the longevity, how good you guys have consistently been to be able to keep it up to this level. You know what I'm saying? And, like, we're not youngins in this game. Not you know what I'm saying? So it's like we've, we've put our time in, but still, even, even to this day, when I hear a new song by you or a new rhyme scheme, I feel like... He's still, he's still figuring this out. Like, in other words, you're you're trying you're trying to figure out a way to make this verse better than anything you just did prior right. to it, right? Word. Each fucking verse is like that's how I feel when I listen to you. I'm like, oh, he's still fucking with different flow patterns. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like, looking. and cares about it, and cares about it in the Deeply. pockets, and like, I don't ever, I don't ever know where your rhyme's gonna fall at, and I don't know how many syllables you're gonna fucking hit but but that's the other thing is like when people are like we don't care about the syllables and all that shit yo you need to because that's the craft of hip -hop. doing it yeah, i that's mean you don't need MC to you don't, that's it, MC, yeah. it's up to you it's up to you like how how you know whatever you, whatever you feel you know but like i think that people are just sometimes mistaken best mcs for their favorite rappers speaking of favorite rappers um tretch Tretch. Tretch, I don't see on a lot of lists either. Yeah. And that shit is infuriating to me because I think that, again, we was talking about like, Rakim did something that had never been done, and Kane did something, then G Rap did something that had never been done. Tretch did, the, to me, I think, I think what happened with Tretch, and this is just in my circle of friends that, that we talk about shit, mm -hmm. one of the common things said is, well, he did OPP and he did Hip Hop Array. Right, right. But, he was still rhyming his ass off on those songs, right? Right. But he also did something to me, in my opinion, that, like, his... There was a time period probably between 91 and about 95 where every fucking... Damn near every rapper in the game was was following him. Right. And trying to do what he was doing. Absolutely. Dressing like him. 
Do, yep. You know what I'm saying? The whole the whole shit moving yeah. like him. Exactly. Like, and he was getting on fucking songs and smoking everybody. Man. And it was like, yo, when I heard Yoke the Joker, my fucking heart sank. My heart sank because I was like, I'm never going to be this good. Wow. I might as well quit. I didn't write a rhyme for the entire summer. I said this on the Ice-T documentary, but this is real shit. I didn't write for an entire summer. And Proof was like, Proof was like, yo, man, he's good, but you got to keep... Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right, and right. I was just like, ah, but I'll never be that good. By the time it got to Wickedest Man Alive, mm. I was like, I, I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. You got a favorite Tretch verse? I got a lot of favorite <laughs> Tretch verses. My, my, my... When I heard him do the, when I heard him yoke the Joker, when he was like, oh, fuzzy, dirty, dizzy, dozzy, get the fix in these. Remember how blistery? You ain't ready for the Freddy you rap. He can't kill me. I step into your dreams, you feel me. Slicing your life away. Just like my mic today, I eat you the psycho way. I'm ripping shit right away. Whoa. Man, he was kidding. <laughs> Yo. Tretch. <laughs> I, there, are, there are some in this genre that have not even caught up to that. All this time has passed, and and those verses are so timeless to me. Right. Like, you got beef for what we do talk to the bunny, Sonny. He's the man, Bugs, the thug with the money. Funny that you should mention, how's my family to cover? What's up to my cousins and my sisters and my Warner brothers? Birds of a feather, flop and fella be together. No matter what you whatever endeavor, find who's better. You, me, he, she, them, him, those are others. He skip two ducks with one pluck, initiate the trouble. Mm. For those who disagree or maybe feel the need to front it, show me your whole entire crew, two shoes, and I'ma run it. Do Break you it. want it, maybe? Yo. Yo. I was just like, God damn, no one had did that yet. He was, what he did was, he did wordplay, he did compound syllables, multi-syllable rhyming, and he did it in different styles. Right. He never had to listen to go back and listen to that first album. He never did the same style twice. A, I loved his image. I loved what he was about. Mm -hmm. He looked cool. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And you you he, he you believed him. Right. He was believable. He looked the part, he acted the part, he was the part, right? So that's why I think a lot of rappers just kinda started going and i did like with my writing and shit by the time the second album came out i sounded just like him mm. i sounded just like trench I, I sounded like cool g rap like there's so many eras that i sounded like other rappers you know what i'm saying right. but like it it's what we do when we're kids yeah right? we get yeah. we get influenced yeah. you know what i mean and we're inspired what you think about royce as a producer man is that weird it's really fucking weird it's re <laughs> i told him yo years ago years ago when we first met i was like yo I was like, you should, I said, because the, the way he was picking his beats mm -hmm. and like his ear for him, I was like, yo, why don't you just make beats? Because when I f first started making beats and learned how to do it, you can control what you make, right? right? So it's like making the song, like lose yourself and sitting there from like from mm -hmm. the beginning of the, like down to the end of a, the completed song, right? Like you can make that trajectory go wherever you want it to go, right? Right. Both of us were kind of so focused, still focused on rap, right? But he was like, I think he would have rather put his time into the pen. Mm -hmm. But I kept telling him, like, even years later, like, yo, man, I'm telling you, you'd be good at it. And he started doing the shit, and then I didn't hear from him for a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> and then he started, like, hitting me off with beats, and I was like, yo, this yeah. shit is crazy. That's crazy. That you gonna learn one? Yeah. That and then I was hard. like, what the fuck? Like, bro, how how did you get this good this quick? Man. But I, you know, hey man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I same thing with me, man. I went over there. He like, I'm making beats now, crook. I said, for real? He started making a beat. I was like, damn, that's just kind of dope. I went outside to smoke a cigar and I started thinking of a 16 bar rap. Yeah. And I said, I'm thinking of a rap to a Royce, Royce beat. beat. Yeah. And I went back in there like, yo. I'm doing a new album with my little brother's family business. You want to um, produce the whole thing? <laughs> and he was like, you think I'm ready for something like that? I was like, yeah, I think you're ready. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? And that's when we came over and played you, you know what I'm saying, the stuff yeah. over there. And Yeah, man. Um, man, you just said lose yourself. Um, I went down the wormhole myself looking at your producer credits. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And... I talk to hip hop fans every single day on Twitter. You know, that's one of the things I do. I engage with them, I ask them questions, rap questions. Do you feel like, cause I don't. So do you feel like your name is mentioned enough in the producer's conversation? Uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, no, 
No, I don't. Um, no, I'm kidding. I, I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I love to make beats, right? Mm -hmm. And over the years I had learned how to produce and probably made some of my biggest songs. Right. And, and was just doing what felt right. You know what I'm saying? But, but I'm more so like, I, it's fun for me to make beats, but it's not as fun as rap is. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, but I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I... I mean, because people are like, yo, rappers who make beats, top five. And I'm like, yo, you got to put him in there. You know what I'm saying? And then some of them don't even realize how many songs that you have produced, you know what I mean? And that they they know and love the song, they just didn't know that you produced it. Um, that's crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy to me. Um, I don't even understand how that even happens. You know what I mean? Like, I think you rap so well that it kind of just sucks all the oxygen out of the conversation. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, like the first album, you know, like I would sit in there with the Bass Brothers and Jeff Bass like played instruments, right? Like he played the guitar, he played the bass, he played the keyboards and all that shit. I knew this music better than they did as far as like what it should sound like, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. So I would just sit in there on the drum machine and I had to have somebody show me how to work it, <laughs> you know, to keep <laughs> right. the metronome going and shit. And, uh, what started coming out of those sessions, and I sometimes I'd be like, like, yo, okay, what was that chord? Okay, try it. What if you tried that? Now go up with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then I hum them, because I don't know how to play instruments. So right. I'd be like, I would just hum a lot of shit, right. you know? And uh, that's how I started making the beats, and Dre was like, yo, you're producing. That's producing. Hmm. And I was like, it is? Oh, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like... And just fell into, you know. Yeah, like, it's funny, like, I was thinking the other day, cleaning out my closet, That's that beat was actually a beat I was making for Bizarre. Really? Yeah. And then, I don't remember what happened, but I ended up taking the beat, and I was just like, because sometimes, if someone's there, yeah. like, as I'm making the beat, and they start wanting to write to it, I yeah. usually just give, give it, it to them. them. And, and I don't remember what happened with that, but... uh and it just became the stadium mover. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's one of my favorite songs to watch you perform. Really? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm lying. It's just go. That's the other thing, you too. Know what I'm, like, I'm not a singer, so I remember, like, <laughs> some of my early, early shit was really rough. Like, was really rough. Like, But it was, like, a lot of times, like, and, I, and this is from coming up in Detroit, like, Proof had the connects, right? So mm -hmm. Proof used to know Jay Dilla. Proof used to know everybody who was anybody, right? right? So, and I don't know if you remember that phase where, like, rap was going through a phase. Well, it, I mean, it still does it, but this there was kind of a phase in, like, the mid-late 90s where, like, if you could get a chick to sing on your song. Right. And you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. an actual singer chick. Mm -hmm. And Proof would come over with new music and man, Dilla's making the beats and he's got chicks all over his hooks and shit. Right. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, so I would start like thinking of like hooks like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And being like, well, someone else could sing this and I'll just lay it for right now. For right now. And then it ended up becoming a thing where I was just like, fuck it, I'll just leave it. You know? <laughs> I, the good decision. Um, <laughs> Godzilla, man. I got to tell you, that's one of my favorites right now. You know what I'm saying? My favorites always change when I listen to, to albums. Right now, I'm fucking with Godzilla heavy every day, all day. You know what's what up? I'm saying? Um, that shit is crazy. I mean, the, the, the cadences and all that, like, absolute murder. The beat, who did that beat? Uh, DA. That shit is crazy, man. Um, yeah. R.I.P. to Juice World. you know what I mean? That kid was amazing. Yeah. You know, on that on that joint, um, favorites change. Um, yo, shout to Juice too, man. Like, yo, he that kid was so talented, man. He like his his freestyle he did on Westwood, where he rapped for an hour. Like, what the fuck? And, and that, I mean, he was like, 
like I, he might have been ri- mixing a little bit of written in there with, right. but the way he was free, like that's the that's the shit that we used to try to do at the hip hop shop was like try to work on our freestyles, right? But be able to slip in and out of written when you need to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If right. you got a certain punchline you want to get to to take a, take out this dude, right? So it, to be so young, he like mastered that so fucking quickly. Yeah, it's really sad, man. That that. Like his potential was so off the charts. Very. I, I tweeted one time, you know, I like this Juice World kid, and you know I got some real hardcore boom bap type hip hop lyricist fans that follow me too, and they're like, Juice World, he uses auto tune. I'm like, yo, I dropped a link to that Westwood freestyle. Yeah. Like, yo, don't even talk to me, just watch this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He he definitely had it, man. Um, it's crazy that some <clears throat> of these kids out here, I think that inspired by you know you. You know, um, Jay, you know what I'm saying? And they want to really get their pen moving. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you, do you have a favorite? You have any favorites on, on the new joint? On my album? Yeah, on your joint. Oh, every single one. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> nah. Every single... Nah, I mean, you know, I, I... It's funny when, like... You know, when you're making an album and it's like... You know, sometimes you got ideas already. Sometimes you feel like, I don't know if you ever feel like this, but it's like, sometimes I just feel like, I don't feel like having a message in this one. You know what I'm saying? I just want to go as hard lyrically as I can, you know? And then sometimes, like, you know, I'll get in a certain mood and be like, okay, like, if there's something that I'm passionate about, like, this is making me either angry or Mm -hmm. excited or whatever it is, right? You know, I might get the idea to, to do a song about it, like right. the darkness song. Like when I want to say something, when I feel like I really have something to say, I'm gonna do it. The darkness joint. Did you ever feel like you might get some kind of backlash from all this gun politics? Um, you know, um, the right side saying they want to take your guns, the left side saying you know we need more gun control. Did you feel like you would get any backlash from, you know, creating I mean, that type I, of song? I mean, I figured I would get some, but it's kind of like you got to just, I more so care about what I believe in. Right. And whoever else gets fucking pissed off, I don't give a fuck. Like, that's, this is this is my view on it, and this is my take. It might not be your take. So what about the person who is stockpiling his house with 150 fucking guns, Right. Like right. what, whatever war they're waiting for, I don't know what war you're waiting for. That you need that kind of arsenal. I think there's also something to be said. I know there's avid gun collectors and shit like that, but there's something to be said about somebody who's buying that many fucking guns. I just don't have a record of it, or you know, like there's I, I'm not on record as having a you know where I'm able to get flagged. Right. So it's like the the whole message of that song was saying, what about the person that is the that hasn't, you know what I'm saying? Is the first this time is going to be the first time they flip out and they yeah. have an arsenal to do it with. Yeah. What about that guy? Yeah. There's no stopping that guy. Right. And that's what is when it's like, okay, when you when you start calling for like background checks and shit like that instead of the actual problem. Right. You know, we got to do something with the gun laws. Yeah. People start to get like, no, you can't take our guns. You can't take our guns. I'm not saying that. So when you talk about things like that, I would say that that's content. I probably would say that. But your critics would say that you just rap about rapping. Mm -hmm. I just put words together that just rhyme. That's what I do. That shit is crazy, man. But to me, again, yeah, you goddamn right. That's what I do. <laughs> like, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I competitive rap. Yeah. Like, and sometimes I just want to have fun with it. Sometimes right. I just want to make a song that might not be about shit. Right. But for those who can respect how hard I push the pen, right? right? Like, you know, you get people. Oh, so what? You you can you can rap that many. You can say that many words that fast. You're not saying anything. You're not saying. Well, yeah, what do you it, want me to say? It, it takes a skill level to do that, and I feel like they're not respecting that part of the game. You know what I'm saying? It takes a, it takes a phenomenal skill level to rap at the speeds that you rap at, syllables within those. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you're like, then I'm over here, then I'm over there, then I'm over here, then I'm yeah. over there. You know, some people yeah. fool people. You know what I mean? They're just. Then I'm gonna flow and then I'm gonna buzz it down and then I'm gonna. <laughs> you know what I'm like, saying? And then everybody's like, oh shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you actually are putting, you know, 
fucking syllables, punchlines, metaphors within that, you know, cadence. And people are, I just think a lot of times when a rapper says, oh, he's just rapping about rapping or he's too rapidy rap, it usually comes from a rapper who can't rap that well. A lot of people diss what they can't do. Mm. So it's like, if, if I can't do that, I'm going to just... I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna shit on it. Yeah, I'm gonna shit on it and make it like it ain't that good anyways. Right. And then that, that and then people buy that narrative. Yeah. Yep. And then you know it might maybe it makes the person feel good with whatever is going on inside them. I saw some dude. Uh, I don't remember where I even seen this. What show it was on? Like what site it was on or whatever. Some dude was trying to trash J. J. Cole about Middle Child, and was saying, "Oh, it just fell off at the end. It was like." And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I can't take you serious. You critique that. Right, right. And then it's like, sometimes you'll be like, yo, but you listen to that. And then you say, this is trash. Like right. that, that I, I can't respect your opinion. I, I can't. Yeah, they're, they're probably the ones responsible for these top 50 lists that go around. Like people like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I mean, I, and I know it's your opinion, but your opinion's wrong. For, for sure. Yeah. 100 um, speaking of top list, dog, um, is your top nine that you named on Till I Collapse still the same? Yes and no. Yes, because, well, it, what's happened since then is like, you know what I'm saying? It's coming from a place of experience. We know what it takes, basically, like you just said. Um, the why did not think of that? Every time, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, the rapper that makes you go, oh, fuck, why did, ah! Yeah, well, you know, and like, it was right there. Damn, yeah. It's like, sometimes it could be an easy line, and you're like, that line, is, is it seems easy to think of, but it wasn't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And it was like, why did fuck, did I, this is what I do for a living. How come I missed that fucking line? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I hear that shit a lot. Um, Yo, you know what I want to mention, too? I just thought about this. When I got shit, this is funny, pun intended, when I got shit for the your booty is heavy duty, like diarrhea, yeah. I got a lot of shit for that line. Right. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> but it's like, when, oh man, that shit's trash, oh it's trash. I'm just being stupid. Like it's, it's sometimes, you ever think of a punchline as like, it's just supposed to be stupid. Right, it's right, It's not right. supposed to be, you Hard know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that, yeah, it's not supposed to make you, oh shit, your yeah. booty is heavy duty. It's yeah. a fucking stupid line. And sometimes I throw those in there to just like, just to get a reaction out of people, to right. get a laugh, whatever it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that serious, but it's yeah. like, oh man, he sucks because he said, like, Yeah, they up. pick out one thing. Oh, yeah. Because, and that just lets you know how good you are because they'll go through, okay, you just said fucking a hundred dope ass fucking lines, and then they'll pick one and say, but hey, he said this right yeah. here. And it's like, you know, you just know that that person is a hater. I never was like, play a couple lines and be like, oh, I don't like that. I don't right. like what they said right there. Next line, go by. Oh, I like that, though. That's dope. I never hated a song because of one bar. Never. Do you know what I'm saying? Never. Because like, now if I go back and listen to all the classic music that I love growing up, I'm sure I could find that bar that, that you know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? But it's just, it wasn't, that wasn't the point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy now that we have the internet and all that shit. Everybody has an opinion on. Um, well, everybody, everybody's an expert. That's That's the thing that it's like, you know. Yeah, that's why we listen to the fans, man. The fans get you. Your fans, listen, dog, I engage with your fans every single day. You know what I'm saying? They hit me every day. Hmm. Um, some of them leave me. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's all good, man. They Some of them leave me, like, paragraphs in the DM, like, hey, man, if you see Marshall, can you tell him, you know, um, so I'm just like, you know, hey, man, whatever. Um and, they, and they're really passionate about, you know, supporting you. Um, I think any artist would want to have fans like you have, you know I'm what I mean? I'm very grateful for that. Absolutely. Um, do you ever read any of the comments online that they that they leave? I, well, I went through a phase of that for sure. You did? And yeah, and then I had to kind of stop and put it all in perspective and be like, listen, man, like, uh, you know, just reading comments, period. Right. Like. It just makes it like okay, you you realize like you're you're not gonna please everybody. You just right. can't. can't. You know do what I'm saying? Like you can't. You do this over here, and someone doesn't like it. And they want you to do the opposite. Then you do the opposite. You please that person. Right. Or you don't. And 
this person hates it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's very tough. But um, no, I agree with that. It's kind of like you know quarterbacks reading a sports column. You know what I mean? After games, you know it's Monday like, morning quarterback. Yeah, exactly. So, but like like I said, man, these fans that you have that hit me every single day, um, they ask me if I can ask you a couple questions. What's your favorite food? Taco Bandino? Beets. Beets? Yeah, so like, you got good like good ass bullet put Oh, you're talking about this kind of beats. Like beats. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, like, I'm like, damn, your blood pressure is excellent around this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> beats, not uh I don't know. I don't know. My favorite food is I don't really have a favorite food. Okay, let's see. Um favorite TV series. Mm. Right now, currently. Power. Power? Yeah. You watch it? Yeah, I watch Power. Power is hell. You put me up on uh, Walking Dead. I was watching Boardwalk Empire all the time, and you we was at the lab one time. Yeah. And you was like, "Yo, you got to check out Walking Dead." And you was and you said it was some zombie shit. I was like, "I don't know if I could do the zombie shit." And you was like, "No, you got to watch it." Then I got fucking hooked on that shit. Yeah, that shit was a great, great fucking uh, series right there. The Wire. I mean, I've said that many times, but man, that's like cream of the crop. Like those shows that like. I don't know. It's like th there'll never be another one of those. Right, right. Like right. those kind. Like Breaking Bad, incredible. Yeah, man. Breaking Bad was the shit. Oh. Power, power's my shit, though, now, for sure. Shout out to 50. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, <clears throat> do you have any pets? They want to know that. Nope. Do no, not. No pets. Yeah. Are you happy? That's the most, the most number one asked question that I got on Twitter is, can you please ask him if he's happy? I'm never happy. Never. Are you happy when you're angry? You said something like that before. I'm happy when I'm angry, gotcha. yeah, for sure. So when he gets angry, he'll be happy, so you guys get that. That's okay. why I bitch so much. <laughs> I try to stay happy. Oh, now, we man. was talking about, too, like, like I want to mention this, too, man, because I'm sitting here, like, like, we was talking about the list and has it changed. Mm -hmm. Um... I feel like all the rappers that I said on that list will never change. Right. I, I don't know about the order. I don't even know if I should have put it in an order like that. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes right. it's like, sometimes you do things and, and it's like it fits in the rhyme scheme. So you're like, right. like we was talking about people who push the boundaries and like, like Red Man to me, like, you know, like when it seemed like it was a time in hip hop where, and this was like, to me, it was like the late 80s, early 90s, where every time a rapper came out with a new album, mm -hmm. they were the best rapper for a minute. You True. know what I'm saying? Like, like Boogie Down Productions, when by all means necessary, love Criminal Minded, but by all means necessary, it was like the pinnacle of like rap at that point in time was like, what the fuck? Like, right. and Red Man came out, it was so good, right? And then, like, when Nas dropped, right, Illmatic, it was like, this is yeah. as good as it gets, right? right? Like, this, there, it, you can't get any better. Like, that was incredible. And then Biggie. And then, to me, Redman, when he made uh, Muddy Waters, I was like, yo, that, 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 that was like... Um, that was like when he, in my opinion, just pulled ahead of everybody. Mm. He just shot ahead. Like he was like, like the way he, man, the way he was fucking, I can't even think of a. Yeah, he, he absolutely smashed that. Even when I first heard him on, when I first heard him do the Headbangers verse, the Headbangers, what? Yeah. The Headbangers. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this dude right here yeah. is fucking fire. Who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, what the album is so classic to me. So classic to me. Um, because not only was he rapping so good, but it was like his beats and everything. He was making good songs. Right. Right? Like that first album, he just came out the gate making great songs. And again, the image, everything. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it was cool to be Red Man, like to to want to be Red Man. Like, it was like that's Red Man is just fucking cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Red Man was the shit. Um, it still is. Still absolutely. is. He can still go. And that's what I like. I love it when when guys from that era still just fucking they just never lose it. They just yeah, because you can tell he loves it. He that's loves what it. it takes. The yeah. love. Yep. Yo, let me ask you, man. Were you ever a fan of Kobe? Absolutely. I, I mean, who wasn't? Like, man. I don't know how you could not be. I, I can't even, like, I, it makes me sick, man. It makes me really, like, sick to my stomach to even try to grasp what happened. Like. Yeah. Me too, man. Nine people, man. Nine people. Nine people. That, that really shook the world, you know what I'm saying? Um. And I read, and I asked you that too because I feel like great people have a lot in common. I feel like you have, you know, what he had that killer instinct when you go in the booth, that work ethic. If he's showing up two hours before everybody else working on a shot, I've seen you in the studio, you know, working on a hook. That, you know, getting it down to the fucking last fucking fucking molecule in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just yeah. making sure that that shit is right, man. Your work ethic is incredible. Thank you. Um, is that something that you developed over the years? Or did, like, is that something like hanging around, working with Dr. Dre? Like, when did you develop this, this work ethic that's just, like, robotic almost? I mean, that was before I even got signed was that, you know what I'm saying? Like, like me, you know, me and Denon knew, cause Denon was like, me and, me and him were so close, like got really close really quick, right? Mm. Just because of the things that we had in common and everything, right? So we kind of just felt like we don't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, it was a do or die situation. Like, because I, I, there was nothing else I knew how to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, a lot of times, like we used to have to, we, I remember we used to go to this place called Mo Masters. We used to go to Mo Masters Studio, and it would be like, uh, you know, ten dollars an hour, something like that. And so we'd have an hour, <laughs> basically, right, <laughs> to get to. So, so then I made sure, like, we made sure we had the beat. I had the lyrics written, and I already knew the song by heart. Mm. Go in there, you know what I'm saying? But, but it's like once I got a chance to. Once Dre, you know, uh, gave me that shot, like I was like, I, I, I can't. There's no turning back. Like I can't. You know what I'm saying? Like right, right. No and that's, turning back. All I needed was like that, and uh, yeah, man. And plus, I watched Dre do it. Like that dude, like still to this day, is constantly lives in the studio because he loves it. Right. Right. That's why we do it because we love it. I like to before I close. I like to give some sort of gem, get the guest to give some sort of gem to like an up and coming artist that's that's trying to make it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You just described a picture of you having to memorize your raps um, before you go to the studio, looking at the clock on the wall and shit. I only have so much time in there. I gotta get it all out. Yeah. I mean, it's a real grind. I think sometimes the up and coming artists look at people's results and they don't understand the that. work that it took to get there. Yeah. Um, what would you say, man, to kind of inspire some young artists? Like, what do they what do they need to do, in your opinion? Well, I mean, times are different, right? So we got like the kids. You can make a fucking studio quality album on your laptop, basically. Right. You know what I'm saying? So based off that, it's like what I would say to the to the up and coming like you know any new up and coming rapper i would say that it is hard to get it and it's even harder to maintain it mm. right so it's like as hard as i worked back then you know when you've made thousands of songs right. and you're like what the fuck am i going to rap about that i haven't already you know what i'm saying like right. and you start once you like you when you start out with a blank canvas and then you paint it everywhere on that bitch, there ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
So I that's it's one of the things that I do it because I love it. Mm. So I put in the overtime. I don't. It doesn't bother me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's fun for me to do that. So I would say that if this is something you're passionate about, just give it everything. Give it everything. You know what I'm saying? Like you have nothing else. There's nothing else you. If if this is what you want, it's gotta be what you want more than anything else in this world, right? Mm. It, whether it's whatever it is, like if it's a sport, if it's a fucking, you know, this sport, you know. It's jewelry time. <laughs> That's what I say every time. Uh, man, dog, I like to thank you, man, for giving me some of your time, a lot of your time, actually, man. Um, Absolutely, but yo, was... I watch Chris Corner. I watch it all the time. It's fucking dope to me because, like, I, I, a rapper of your caliber to do something like this is just a. It's such a good concept because you are an expert in this field. Do you know what I'm saying? Appreciate that. And I man. think that everyone needs to know that who doesn't already. Do you know appreciate what I'm saying? Appreciate that, bro. I appreciate so, it. And man. as hard as you go with the pen, man, like fuck. I, I'm telling you, this is top notch, top tier lyricists. You, Royce, man, it's like, like it's 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 uh, I feel like it's great that I know you guys, man. Because likewise, it's it's also like it's it's kept me over the years to push my pen and to keep going, right? Because yeah. it's like likewise, my brother. Absolutely. Music to murder to be murdered by, out now. Everybody go get it three or four times. You know what I'm saying? Stream the fuck out that bitch. You know what I mean? And um, I'm on track 19. Get you a rap media host that could do both. Marshall <laughs> Mathers in this motherfucker. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. Absolutely. I really appreciate Absolutely. you, man. Absolutely. You know I'm saying? Much more too. success to you, my brother. Absolutely. Crook's Corner, we out of here. Peace.